Hello everyone and welcome again. So today's lesson will be on industrial chemistry and this series will focus on the last of the major chemicals that we'll be talking about which is sodium carbonate and so we'll be studying the Solvay process which is the process that we use in industry to turn salty water into sodium carbonate. Okay. So sodium carbonate is the focus of this series. So in today's lesson we have a focus on sodium carbonate. Okay, so what is sodium carbonate? What is it used for? Um, and how does it operate? So, firstly we need to know what the raw materials of sodium carbonate are. Okay, so how do we, what raw materials do we need to actually make this sodium carbonate? So, similar to NaOH, one of the major raw materials from sodium carbonate is brine. So brine is just concentrated NaCl solution. Okay, so it's just a concentrated salt solution. So there's our salt. Other chemicals that we require for the, for the production of sodium carbonate is ammonia. So we need ammonia, so remember the harbour process. So ammonia should jog your memory about the harbour process. And carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide can be created from the decomposition of calcium carbonate. Or we can, if we have a, say a brewery, a brewery nearby, so a beer manufacturing site, we could use the carbon dioxide from that. Um, power plants and things like that, we could also use carbon dioxide. So it's just carbon dioxide, any carbon dioxide will work. So what are the uses? What does sodium carbonate actually do for us? Well, in industry, it has lots of uses. So manufacture of glass is probably the, its biggest use. So sand, as you know, is silicon dioxide, sodium carbonate, and limestone, which is calcium carbonate, are mixed together and heated to produce glass, which is a mixture of sodium oxide, silicon dioxide, and calcium oxide. So when you mix the three together, you get glass. Um, so remembering from the olden days, those glass blowers, they used to um, sort of roll glass in a, on a pipe and then blow air into it to make it expand into globes. Um, so it's also used as a water softener. So Remembering that hard water is just the just has calcium or magnesium in it, and if it if there are carbonate ions in the water, they'll precipitate out to form calcium carbonate and magnesium carbonate. So if we throw a lot of calcium uh, sodium carbonate into the water, that those carbonate ions will react with these calcium ions to remove them. Okay. We also use it in paper making. So sodium carbonate is converted to sodium silicate and is used to stabilize peroxides in the bleaching of paper. So it's just used as a, as a stabilizing agent in um, paper production. And it's also used in detergents, again, as a water softener. Okay? Uh, on the topic of detergents, also was used for a, small, or for a brief period to make soap. So similar to sodium hydroxide, it could be used as a soap as well. Uh, it's also used in pharmaceuticals, uh -huh. not for any other reason other than to fill out tablet, um, tablet size. So you can use it to fill out tablets or to act as a foaming agent. So those sort of aspirin things that dissolve or fizz uh, usually just have sodium carbonate in it um, and that's the fizzing agent. So sodium carbonate can also be used in the refining of aluminium. So finely divided bauxite is fused with sodium carbonate and it's dissolved to form sodium aluminate and it leaves behind the Fe2O3 and silicon dioxide impurities behind. So it can be used to help sort of lower the energy costs of refining aluminium as well. Okay, so question one, list some uses of sodium carbonate. So we went through a lot of them already, so hopefully you'll remember them. So one is the manufacture of glass, so it's called soda glass, um, it's used very frequently. Um, it's used as a water softener because of the, that carbonate group at the end. The carbonate reacts with the mineral ions to form precipitates, softening the water. It's used as paper making to stabilize peroxides. It can be used as a detergent. Making pharmaceuticals, remember to sort of fill out a pill, also to create foaming, that foaming action. And also used in the refining of aluminium. So why would sodium carbonate be used as a water softener? 
Well, hard water is caused by excess Ca2+, and Mg2+. Okay? By adding Na2CO3, which is sodium carbonate, since it's soluble, the Ca and Mg ions can be precipitated out of the solution. So here's an equation. Ca2+, plus, plus CO3 2 minus, gives you CaCO3, which is solid, as you know, calcium carbonate. Now this has the effect of removing calcium and magnesium from the solution, and thus softens the water, as I mentioned earlier. Okay? So because it removes, it, can, it takes the Ca2 plus out of the water and becomes solid, we essentially soften the water. Using appropriate chemical equations, explain why Na2CO3 is added to pool water after chlorination. It's a very interesting question. So if for those who have pools, you should know that chlorination is used to remove bacteria. So when chlorine is added to water, it tends to make the water acidic. So when you add Cl2 plus H2O, you get HCl. And this HOCl, which is, high, which is the hypochlorite, or the, um, and it's the hydrogen hypochlorite ion, or uh, chemical. And this chemical here is actually the cause of the whole cleaning out of the whole disinfection. This is actually not the disinfectant, this one is. Okay, this is similar to bleach. So the addition of sodium carbonate can increase the pH as it is a basic compound. So you can see here that the Na2CO3 plus the two HCLs gives you water, carbon dioxide, and a bit of salt. So you can see that by adding this, it will remove the acid to prevent you from getting in a very acidic pool, which could you know, hurt people's eyes or irritate their skin. Okay, so you add it just to reduce the acidity of your pool or increase the pH. Are there any other ways to produce Na2CO3 using common compounds? So the question is, well, this seems like it's a good chemical. Can we do it any other way than the Solvay process? Yes? Well, sodium carbonate can be produced from the absorption of CO2 into NaOH. So what happens is you get NaOH plus CO2 gives you sodium carbonate. Cool, very nice. This method is used for controlling the CO2 concentration in labs. So for instance, if you're in a lab and it, you need to constrain the amount of CO2 or need to control it, we can absorb the CO2 into this NaOH, which we produced through the chloralkali process, so the electrochemistry that we studied before. And we can actually absorb the CO2 and and actually monitor the amount of CO2 in our lab. Now some researchers I've seen are trying to use this to reduce the CO2 concentration in the atmosphere. Okay? So you've got all this CO2 in the atmosphere that we're very worried about, so why don't we pump air across NaOH, heaps and heaps of NaOH, and then remove that carbon dioxide. It's a very viable option, and it has shown some possibility of working. Now the only question is what do we do with the Na2CO3. Um, that's another question for another day, I think. But So it has been used, uh, and it can be produced, but maybe not on large scale as we would like it to be. Now question five. If the calcium carbonate supply is low, what are other methods that could be used to obtain CO2 in sufficient quantities? So let's say the calcium carbonate that I said at the start is what we put into sodium carbonate. What happens if we don't have any of that? Um, is there anything else that we could use? Well, obtaining CO2 from the atmosphere is not likely is likely not to be very efficient. Okay, so because the CO2 is very very dilute in the atmosphere, we really don't want to try and concentrate it because that would take a lot of energy. So in order to obtain obtain sufficient quantities of CO2, the chemical plant could be stationed near a brewery or a plant, a power plant which already produces large amounts of CO2, and capturing it for the production of Na2CO3 could be a very sustainable way to obtain CO2. So if we put it near a power plant that's already spewing out CO2, why don't we just capture it, because it's in such high concentration, and pump it into our new process, and then we could have a really sustainable Na2CO3 production. Electricity is generated, CO2 is being used up, so everything is pretty, pretty sweet. The only problem is, of course, that a lot of these processes require heat, and so, um, and also power plants tend to be very far away from demand, so you'd have to transport all your Na2CO3 very long distances um, to get to where they need it. So that 
concludes today's lesson on calcium, uh, sodium carbonate. So we looked at what sodium carbonate is, sodium carbonate is, and what is it used for in industry. So in the next few lessons, we'll be talking about the Solvay process and how do we actually produce sodium carbonate um, for industrial use. So I look forward to seeing you at our next lesson.